Hi, welcome to Yogi's Home. I post new videos every Tuesday and most Thursdays. Today, we are going to be talking about how the coronavirus impacted sex workers in the Netherlands. And I'm here with Vicky from Spot 46, who is going to be walking us through how it, everything went and what lessons we can learn to improve in the future. So if that sounds good to you, why don't you come on in, kick off your shoes and stay a while. I'm really glad you're here. Vicky, thank you so much for, for coming and um, sharing your story with us. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Spot 46? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, so, uh, hi, my name is uh, Vicky Banga and uh, I work at uh, Spot 46. We are an information and advice center for sex workers in, in The Hague. So, that's, uh, we provide information and advice. Yeah, that's great. Uh, what kind of information is it just about like sexual education or also about business stuff? Like, is it uh, like, like everything we, we provide from the, from the first step, like you decide or someone decides uh, he or she wants to become a sex worker. How do I do it? What, what do I need? Um, do I need a, a business bank account? Do I need a, yeah, like everything. It's 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 setting up a small business yeah. uh, on your own. Yeah. And then, of course, what you said, like uh, uh, sexual health and uh, all kinds of uh, your well-being, your health, your uh, how, how you professionally want to develop, because there's different. Uh, ways of doing sex work so so there's not only one way you have escort you have sm you have all kinds of different things and uh, other than that if you decide you want to stop and do something else we can also provide help with that so it's like a whole yeah we we provide everything i hope <laughs> that's amazing is your is the service of spot 46 free for sex workers or is it a paid service and uh, now it's well, it is free. Uh, information and advice that me and my colleagues provide is free. We do have a few uh, services which, which they have to pay for. Like we have an accountant uh, once a week who comes here and uh, he, he's, he does the accounting for the small businesses, the sex workers, which is, which is a service that he provides. So he, we, we facilitate that because he's here, the sex workers can come here and we provide contact with uh, a reliable accountant. So so that's a service they have to pay for. That's great. That's really, really helpful. I think also, well, there's stigma and shame still surrounding sex work yes. and to have a place like Spot 46 where you can come in a completely non-judgmental way um, and also, yeah, the, the service providers that you can put sex workers in touch with to know that they're also not going to be shamed or, you know. Yes, they, they don't have to explain themselves uh, yeah. or how they earn their money because because it's it's we know it, uh, the accountant knows it, and it's and it's it's perfectly acceptable and okay. We've already kind of jumped in about accounting and small businesses. Can you tell us what is the legal status of sex workers in the Netherlands? Well, sex work in the Netherlands is legal. Um, it's, it's been like that for, for a while, for a long time. Uh, and I, I think in, in most developed countries that's the case because you have to understand like you, uh, sex works sex work has to be legal in order to protect sex workers and also having um, making sure that uh, that they can go to the authorities if something happens you know so it's it's a legal uh, profession now are they when you talk about legal business are you talking about that they work for themselves as a independent contractor or you know a small business owner themselves or they can go to for example a house and become an employee of the house where they are like a typical standard employee with a contract uh yeah like uh, the, most sex workers in the netherlands are uh, self-employed yeah uh, so when i say small business i i mean one person self-employed person 
you work you work for yourself because in this field of work i think it's it's one of the most important thing that it's your decision and your body and the services that you provide so that's why i think it's important that's a really good point it's very difficult if you think about sex work to be working for someone to be an employee of someone who's telling you what you have right. to do especially right. if you're not yeah. comfortable with that yeah. or it's just not something that you want to do so yeah, yeah. that's yeah. yeah thank you thank you for explaining that so we're going to be talking about what happened with coronavirus, but before we can say what happened, can you tell us a little bit, what did the industry look like before coronavirus came to the Netherlands? Uh, okay, so sex work is legal in the Netherlands and you have different uh, locations or places where sex workers can work. Either they would uh, work behind the window or a club or a brothel, or you also have escorts and uh, these these different uh, locations uh, you have for, for, for sex work and what we already discussed, like um, in, in every case, it's, um, they are working for themselves. It's, it's mainly the, the location is different, like where, where they are doing it. So yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's how, it, uh, how, it, how it was before. So can you tell us a little bit about what happened when, yeah, like in mid-March, when things started closing in the Netherlands? Yeah, um, I think it was the day, the day before, or like 15th of March, I believe, they heard in the afternoon, or it's five o'clock in the afternoon, that uh, by six o'clock they would have to leave and everything will be shut down. And... Uh, the, that meant like for, for most of them, you, you have to understand like most sex workers earn their living uh, day by day. So if Monday they work, then, then Monday they make, make X amount of money. So it's not like most of us who would receive a salary once a month or every two weeks. Uh, they make their living every day. Okay they could uh, save some money some of them do some of them don't but that's like, just a personal choice but so they had to close from within within an hour i think they had to pack their stuff and leave and uh, that that was like that was a shock for uh, for everyone absolutely yeah. Un completely understandable that with no notice or you know maybe as you're saying if you're working for the day that day for like the next day or two to earn your salary or your living that is quite quite something to have to deal with that suddenly you are not allowed to do that yes. for an indefinite period of time right because yeah. we didn't know when things would open or when they would yeah stay closed so that must have been really a challenge yeah yeah when they were when they were told that this was be that they couldn't work anymore mm -hmm. did the government already have a plan in place as to how they were going to deal with sex workers or was there no plan it was just like you can't work and you have to go home and <laughs> wait you know by the tv for the news yeah I, well the first few days i think this was the case because uh, it was also sudden for the government i mean mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like they've been uh, preparing for this for for months. Yeah. It was they they had to make this uh, decision uh, to protect uh, the public, and I understand that. So there there was there was no uh, social benefits for them to to apply for because mm -hmm. Corona it's never happened before. So. So how do you do it? What do you do? The first few few days after they after they stopped working, we received like really a lot of phone calls. Like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna pay my rent? Uh, how am I gonna support my family back home? For those sex workers who are here in the Netherlands from abroad, like uh, it was really it was really panic. I would say, yeah. I can imagine. Were they? Then the government announced like some kind of help for people who are ZZP or yeah. self-employed. Yeah. So that must have been 
a pretty big stress relief to know that if you were a sex worker and you were a ZZ peer, which most, as you mentioned, are, mm -hmm. um, that they would be allowed to apply for some of these benefits and make it through the period. Was that the was that the case? And is that what happened? Yeah. So then it it got introduced, as you said. It's called the Dozo. Like <laughs> it's it's the it's the Dutch abbreviation for these financial benefits for for people who are self-employed. Uh, but well, they made this decision, but there were so many question marks still. Like, um, who 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 is who does call who who can qualify? Who who is not uh, able to qualify? Like, we work with a lot of sex workers who come here from abroad to do this uh, work, and for most social benefits in the Netherlands, you cannot qualify unless you're you've been here for five years. Is that, the, is, is that the case with Tozo or not? And we asked these questions at yeah, like the, the, the local uh, government uh, of The Hague, like, like, is it the case? They didn't know because it was new for them also. So mm -hmm. there were weeks passing by and we didn't know, can we apply? Can we help them apply for this social benefit or not? So it really took like, uh, some time for for everything to 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 have a clear picture what is allowed what is not allowed and uh, yeah so a lot of question marks at the beginning definitely yeah and then did the question marks sort of fade away did we get some answers some and of them yes yeah, some of them so this example i mentioned like no they did not have to uh, be already five years in the Netherlands. So, um, yeah, so some of the question marks uh, disappeared, uh, but there were still some groups, like mentioned uh, opting in, which is like a construction, you are not a, a, a CCPR, as you said, like uh, of officially registered self employed uh, person, um, but it's like a uh, a, a, some it's a, like an in between uh, uh, thing. Um, they there was there was nothing for them because you're not CCP. Uh, you don't you cannot uh, apply for the same uh, financial benefits as CCP. But you're you're also not applicable for other social benefits. So it, for them it was really a, a longer period before we could we could help them get some, uh, some financial support yeah. because there was nothing in place uh, at, uh, at a local level. Yeah. No. That must have been such a scary thing for, for people to go through and such an uncertain time for, for them. I, I'm really, I found myself often wondering because we had met prior to coronavirus and yeah. so I really found myself thinking a lot about people in this situation and how they're going to handle it and how is the government going to handle it? I must admit that at first I was excited to hear, oh, the government is offering help to ZZ payers. And I was thinking, great, you know, mm -hmm. sex workers are part of that and they're also going to be mm -hmm. able to receive the support. So yeah. as things started falling into place and eventually there were some issues, weren't there, with sex workers being excluded from Yes, some of them excluded because of the of the way they work. So the construction, they are not such a pair, so they do not qualify. And also, um, this this financial support is provided by the local government. But people working in the Hague as sex workers doesn't mean that they live in the Hague. So they would live in Rotterdam, Eindhoven, Groningen, different cities around the Netherlands, and it's. The regulations for for applying for these social benefits is different in every city. I mean, in, in general, the gen in general lines, it's the same. But we had very similar sex workers. One was one did qualify, and the other didn't. And why? Like, is it because they lived different cities, different different people at the at the local government dealing with their uh, cases? It's, uh, in some cases, it was just um, um, for us not to comprehend, like, why, why would you not? And, and so it was like a lot of uh, 
um, calling on the phone, a lot of asking a lot of questions, and uh, in some cases we we did try, we did our best, and some of them just did not qualify, and then that's like a big uh, slap in the face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I'm really glad that we're talking today because you know we can use this as lessons learned or what happens, how the government can actually support really everybody if you're saying that sex work is a legal profession, you are asking them to, you know, to be regulated as such, to really just treat everyone the same in case something like this happens again. But Yes, and it's... Corona was, nobody prepared for this, it yeah. was unexpected for everyone, but the combination of, of this striking so unexpectedly and stigma that rests upon sex work is just a deadly combination. I mean, because because other professions can can hold up a sign and stand in front of the parliament like, uh, I'm a hairdresser, I want to work. Sex workers, maybe their family, their parents don't know that they're doing this job you know, because of, of the stigma. Like they, they just, they're just so silent that like it's it's a very bad combination. Yeah. yeah. Now that you mentioned silence, I, w I think it's really interesting to mention your Instagram account because you do have this Instagram account where you are sharing um, stories that sex workers share with you to kind yeah. of try to shed some of the stigma and yeah, to unite, to, to show that we're all the same. You know, we all kind of go through the same thing. So I'm following your Instagram account. Would you like to say something about that? And also then we will definitely put it here on the screen if you guys are interested to follow them. I really, really enjoy this uh, Instagram account. It's very yes. interesting. Thank you. It's mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's called Humans in the Red Light, The Hague. And we, we started before Corona. Um, it's, it's human stories of sex workers to to let everyone see that, yeah, it could be your neighbor, it could be the the father of 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 the of the boy your 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 child is going to school with. So it's really you you never know and uh, like just forget judgment, forget stigma, and look at the person, look at the human. Yeah. So and how after Corona, a lot of stories which we posted were of course because everyone was sharing stories with us about their lives, like yeah, since March, all of our lives are around Corona, like how does it affect me financially, emotionally, how, how am I going to survive? So you can also find uh, a lot of stories from sex workers there during yeah. Corona times, yeah. It's definitely a really interesting thing to check out. So. Please do if you haven't if you have an Instagram account, check them out. <laughs> so we keep talking about pre-corona or during the corona times, but are we still in corona times or have sex workers been allowed to go back to work? Uh, yeah. Well, I think we are still in corona time, yeah. unfortunately. So it's it's here to stay for a while. But uh, as of the first of July, they are allowed to work again. Mm -hmm. And it was almost as unexpected as, as, as they had to stop in March. Uh, like they did, they did a lot of um, work on, uh, you know, on hygiene uh, at the different uh, sex work locations. Uh, um, like, so did hairdressers and you see all the, um, you see everywhere where people go in the shops with all the screens and everything. and. Uh, thermometer so like um, uh, measuring your your temperature so really the the owners of the brothels and the different sex locations really did their best to let the government see like we're ready for it we can meet the same standards as a hairdresser who will allow to work uh, much sooner than we were so we are very glad that they could uh, go back to, to work as of the 1st of July, yes. Yeah. And in your experience and from what you're hearing, have most sex workers gone back to work or are they still a little bit hesitant? Or, you know, what's been kind of the reaction? 
like um, of course they didn't have any income for um, for a few months I mean some of them did get the social benefits but some of them didn't qualify so anyways um, they were very keen on, on earning money again most of them of course some of them are not back in the Netherlands because they went back to their home country um, a lot of them are back um, and we also hear from a lot who are still afraid to work because they they just like it's 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 the same in the in the society some people are more afraid of corona than others and i think it's uh, caution is is always a good thing but some of them say like i have children at home or i have a grandmother who's 90 plus so i'm just not taking my chances and we have to we have to respect that i think so if they do not feel it's uh, that it's safe then they they should not be forced to go back to work so some of them choose for not not working yet yeah of course Make, makes absolute sense yeah. so you mentioned briefly about the hygiene uh, regulations do you know are you familiar with what they are currently for sex workers is there anything that the sex workers that haven't gone back to work or the people that might want to visit a sex worker what should we know is there anything to share yes generally there's there are no um, regulations for sex workers in particular so sex work is um, just like any other professions requiring physical contact uh, like uh, I mentioned hairdresser, uh, masseuse, like uh, if you, when you get a massage it's physical contact yeah. and uh, that's the same category um, as sex workers so there's, there's no specific regulations the owners of the different uh, locations uh, it's their own initiative that they placed like the dispensers for the hand gel mm -hmm. they placed um, a thermometer in every room so that sex workers can measure the temperature of the uh, client before he or she or he uh, mm -hmm. comes in so but these are not compulsory so they do this uh, for themselves and I must say that our experience is with the sex workers that they are pre-corona before corona they were very already very much uh, focused on hygiene for them it's very important and it is the case you would think uh, like uh, STDs uh, Oh, there the sex workers must uh, must have more than the rest of the population but it's not the case so that also shows like uh, among sex workers there's absolutely not more STDs than than the rest of the population maybe even less but I'm not uh, I cannot definitely say that but um, hygiene is very important when you are doing sex work so I think they are doing it for themselves and for their clients yeah yeah it's important to yeah that's a but that's a really good point that you brought up about hygiene being it was a very high importance uh concern before coronavirus before, yeah. maybe more so as you said than in other industries and then now it continues to be of utmost importance yeah, so yes, absolutely yeah that's a very interesting that's a very interesting point Vicky, can you tell me, in your experience, or in your opinion, if there was to be a second wave of coronavirus um, and we were all required to do what we did uh, back in March and April and May, um, what, if, like, if you could design the, the plan to help sex workers, like, what would be your advice now having gone through this and seeing the issues that, that were brought up? What would be the best way to help them? I mean, I think government uh, provided financial support is it's just it's just one of the one of the main things that uh, that helps uh, sex workers in 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 such a situation. If it's if it if it lasts so so long, like months without income, um, and when they on the government level think about supporting uh, 
supporting small businesses because I'm not only talking about uh, sex work but in general small businesses or businesses I think it's very important to look at how you can include everyone like how I free how it was done now I think is like here's a big part of, of, of all the small businesses that are in trouble and then and then they just okay we have we have this solution for you and you and you and you and they picked like certain groups which they could find a framework to provide for financially mm -hmm. but then the rest is is not provided for so I think including everyone in a way would be would be great uh, and also, uh, I understand that you cannot uh, expect um, all the solutions to your problems from the government because you have to take your own uh, responsibilities. I would think it would be maybe a good idea to, to start like um, an awareness campaign or a program about saving money mm -hmm. uh, because that's one of the things which like most of the sex workers who got into financial problems, that was one of the reasons because they, they did not have any any savings. Yeah. And I think that's that's your own uh, responsibility to to be able to provide for yourself, I mean for for a period of time. Definitely definitely not that you if you have to stop working on a Monday then you don't have any food on the table on a Tuesday. So that should not happen. And you cannot expect it from the government to to solve all your problems. So I think you do have to take your own responsibility. And I think an awareness campaign would be would be something uh, to to do. I think that's actually a great point and not only applying to sex workers, I think yeah. yeah. Also other small businesses, other ZZ peers, and even people, you know, who have a job and just were not saving money. Mm -hmm. Um, it's definitely a really great point that you bring up that yeah, maybe that's something that the, the government of the Netherlands should consider. Yeah. Um Yeah, because it's actually just great it's just great great idea. <laughs> Well, Vicky, thank you so much for, for sharing this with me. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate your time and your insights, and I hope that we're able to help some people and, you know, reduce some of the stigma and also raise some awareness with this video itself. So thank you so much to you and your colleagues at Spot46. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And check out our Instagram. Humans in the red light, the hate. Yes, absolutely. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for spending some time with us today. We really appreciate it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.